Hello, welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition, April the 7th, 2019. And if you check out our website here, we do have a Twitter, Twitter link. And if you could subscribe to our Twitter and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell for future updates, that would be very, we'd be very pleased with that. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. So let's just talk about some stocks we're going to look at for the week. So we're going to talk about Plug. VIPS, LEDS, QCOM, CRBP, SOLY, JD, and AMD. Okay, so let's get started. Let's talk about Plug. So, you know, Plug, I um, like it only because of the fact that it had a new 52-week high. We also see that they had some news on uh, April 3rd that they're going to announce um, they did announce a hundred million dollar debt refinancing debt facility from Generate Capital, and they're basically giving um, Plug Power access to a new source of capital, which is supposed to going to help them with their deployments to allow the team to pursue aggressive market expansion and innovation for 2019, which is what Andy Marsh, the CEO of Plug Power, said. And, um, you know, Jigar Shah, which is the president and co-founder of General Capital, did say that, you know, Plug Power's um, hydrogen fuel cells can bring greater productivity and lower operating costs to the material handling industry. And that uh, with today's financing that they gave them $100 million, uh, Plug Power will be able to efficiently scale to serve the growing market. And they feel that strong financial backing has helped plug power transition to a mature but high growth enterprise. So this is interesting. You know, I mean, it was also named one of the fast companies uh, for 2019 in terms of innovation. Uh, and, you know, plug power has in, been in the hydro cell, uh, cell re revolution for over 20 years. So um, we'll see what happens here. Caution on the stock because I'm not a huge fan of this stock. Um, you know, we've seen it before where they've, um, I think they've done offerings in the past and, and they've done different things. So, uh, again, right now, just keep an eye watch on, on plug because of the fact that of the new 52 week high. So I kind of think that the chart's ready for a move. It also had a nice pocket pivot. And I really like seeing that on a chart, which kind of gives me the signal that, um, this chart is ready to make a new high and a new move to a different channel. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim because, you know, Plug Power has had a rough time in the, I think, the last year. But if we look at how the chart's been behaving, it looks like starting around February-ish, it started to shape up and looks a lot better now. So, Jim, over to you to talk to us about that. Oh, yes. Well, here's your yearly chart right here. I'm going to draw a trend line from this little spot right here all the way up to right about... I almost say right in there somewhere just kind of get it going but we did have a pivot we did have kind of I'd say a pivot point channel on the yearly chart between 174 and 204 then we had that huge sell-off back in December that everybody can remember one of the worst Decembers of the year and she went ahead and bounced on up from that area right there well we did hit a double triple top high I would say more or less triple top high here in the last 20 days and I'm going to pull up the 20 day chart now. See what I'm talking about when I say triple top here at the 264 level. A little bit higher than that, but we did triple top and she did kind of pull back into a, an ascending triangle pattern uh, last Friday. So she's getting ready to make a move either up or down. I'd like to see it break this last previous high that we had here at 268 Friday. If not, she can pull back to this other first support level, which is right around here at 257, which is on the 20-day, 1-hour, um, 20 SMA moving average. And I'm going to pull it up to the 3-minute. We're going to look at the 3-minute real fast. You see the, the, the pattern I was talking about with the ascending triangle, and we're getting ready to squeeze. It'll probably do it pre-market, and if it dips on down, I think it's going to be a strong buy. And... Um, we're going to have a low support down here, right here. Let me put and change this. We've got a low support right here, which was the previous day, Friday, at 257. Then I got a 250, 255 and a 249, and I'm going to put another one right here, right around 251. So I think that would be the lowest it will want to go. That 251 is going to be your third support. Then you're going to have, um, I'd say, your second 
and first is going to be around 255 to 259 and then we need to break that resistance up here and I have a trend line at 267 but the that daily high was at 268 so this is one you want to keep good eye on they did register for a direct offering back on March 20th so that kind of puts a little bitty caution flag in here so I'm really um, going to watch this out next Monday and and this following week and see how she wants to move if she starts to move up I'll probably scalp it and and if it pulls back pretty good I'll probably swing it and that's going to be PLUG and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be VIPS yeah so you know what VIP shop um, you know what this is a Chinese company uh, so this should be on your China China watch list but this is a Chinese company that operates an e-com website and um, they used to be called vipshop.com, but now they're called vip.com. So um, they an online discount sales company. They're actually out of Guangzhou, Guangdong, China. And they were listed back in 2012. They have over 52 million customers. And um, they are, you know, they're kind of near the um, comparable to jd.com which I will be talking about later today, but they're kind of in this, they're definitely in the same space, not as big as JD.com, but they're up there. Um, and um, this company, you know, they're into B to C e-com retailer. They were also at one time the top 250 global powers of retailing, uh, which was mentioned by Deloitte. So this is a stock to watch. And I like it because this one too has a really nice, uh, 52 week high. This also to me had a also a pocket pivot and also looks overbought. So I am looking for the stock to have a continuation. It's been nothing but strength, strength, and strength uh, day after day after day. And I am looking for this stock to make another move. And Jim, maybe you could talk to us about the charts and what you see there. Yeah, I don't see the 52 week high, but I do see what we had here in the past week is a double top the the 50 the, the high was at 1743 and we're down here at 865 on the 52 week so oh yeah so i didn't mean 52 week high sorry yeah, yeah go ahead so then we had we have like we're filling in a gap right now and that's from that double top area and that gap started down here right around 802 and then we hit 865 so we're right in between that gap that i'm talking about right here in this circle so let's pull up the 20 day I'm kind of excited about China I think they're really starting to turn around a little bit we've noticed that in the last couple of weeks the, the China plays but we have had a nice little run from this bottom here at 668 on the 20 day chart a nice little top and then we pulled back to support level support levels right down here at 796 to 802 and then she went ahead in the last last week she went ahead and bounced and hit a double top I do see a, a ascending pattern going on here symmetrical in a way and if we're going to break out we're going to have to break that 871 now I'm going to go ahead and draw a trend line right there at 871 pullback support is going to be probably right around this 849 850 area and then a low support right around 837 where we had that previous high three days ago and that's going to be a solid support so let's pull up the daily one minute. You see the double top we had Friday? She kind of pulled back just a little bit after hours, not much. The moving average on the 20 day come down just a little bit, but we're in the right pattern here. And I'm gonna draw another trend line of support. It could be right in this area right in here. It's kind of cross hairs between that and this one right down here, which is only about two pennies. So this is how I look at it. I see the first support at 860, the second support right around this 850 area, and the third one down here at 837. And I'm just going off that previous day, but um, we're going to be talking about one later that's kind of like this company later on the, through this broadcast. So we have a double top here at 871. Let's see if we can break it and move on up the channel. And I'm going to give you a channel of resistance, maybe a target to hit. Let me pull up that 180 day, see if that helps. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. So we're going to try to get to nine dollars, 
we got three different resistances we got the nine dollars the 933 and the 967 and those are going to be our three targets and if we can get past that we might make it up to 10 1033 on a 180 day pattern and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be leds get the lead out yeah, so you know what? Uh, this company is, uh, you know, LEDs, but, you know, the actual website, if you go to them, it's called Semi LEDs, and they're into the semiconductor space. And also, this company's in Taiwan. Um, so, this is another one that I'm really liking. This also, I think the float on this one, Jim, I believe my memory is pretty good. Oh, good. Uh, low float stock. So keep this one on watch. And I'm liking this one because it had a nice pocket pivot. Stock is overbought. And I spotted this actually on Thursday. And still keeping my eyes on it because I'm looking for this to continue and potentially have a bit of a move here. So, um, you know, keep this one on your watch. And uh, for the day traders or swing traders, I kind of like it for a swing trade, to be honest, at this time. Um, because I just like the direction of the stock where it's going. Uh, and also because it's a low float. So, I mean, I don't want to have to buy it on the day where it's all, you know, running and the stock's ripping. I kind of like to take a starter swing trade at this point and just hold it and wait for the move. I think there's good support here on the chart that Jim's going to be talking about. So, Jim, I'm going to just turn it right over to you to talk to us about LEDS. Yeah, I like LEDs also. And we are getting up here to a resistance level. Let me pull this up to one year. I'll get a better look at it. I always like to look at the year chart first. We're running up into last year's trend lines. or maybe These might even go back all the way to 2017, these red ones. Then we got the yellow ones were 2018. Then the blue ones are the 2019 series. So we run up to the pivot point or really to the first resistance on this chart. Last Friday, we did have a nice five-day breakout on this. The 20 SMA is moving up. We're going to pull up the 20 day now and have a look at it. I color coat each one of my trend lines in different years, different colors, because it kind of gives me a perspective. We did have a little channel back here that I targeted at 389 to 393 to break. We did break that channel in the last four days, last week, period. And she moved on up. She's got a real nice trend line, upper wedge channel here, which is quite impressive. Let me pull that up and draw that in for you real fast. From right about here to, oh, let's put her right there and bring her on up. You can see that channel that, that I provided right there. So the next resistance that we got to get up to is going to be the 20 day high of 490. Support level is going to be the previous high that we had before, and that was right down here at 440. And then your low support is going to be right around 446. And then in the, between this new channel here is going to be your pivot point in between the support system. And that's going to be 420, 432. So you're pleased to go ahead and stop these videos at any time. Save these charts for your own personal reference to see if they match up with yours. So we need to break that resistance on the trend line of around 474. And the previous high we had on a 20-day chart was 490. Then the next resistance is going to be right up here around the $5 area, 506, 507, with a low, low support that I mentioned earlier, right down here, right around 406. And I could see maybe even this trend line right here being one at 415. So I'm going to draw that in there too. This is kind of an up down roller coaster ride, but if it stays in that channel, it should go no lower than 420. But I do see a 415 support level from this previous high we had right in here. But I think this is going to be a continuation moving on up. And I do believe we're going to break that 490 and elevate it to 5 bucks. If not, please keep this on your watch list. It's one of my top stocks that I do like to watch and play. And that is LEDS. And then Miss Vegas is going to bring up QCOM. Yeah, so... Um, QCOM right now, I was actually looking at that stock uh, the other day, but the other reason I was attracted to it uh, was specifically because of the options. And I did see some unusual option going on here. 
and I'm actually using uh, beta testing with a platform called Chatterflow. And uh, what I noticed here on QCOM that there was some unusual option flows for the $61 calls. And these are the ones that expired this Friday, April 12th. There was huge open interest on there. And they, those were going for 36 cents, which is, you know, $36 a contract. Um, so we did uh, share the idea. Um, the other thing, too, is I do want to mention that I always try to find cheaper ones for people with a smaller account. So I did also um, share ones for $62.50 strike uh, price and expiring the same time, April 12th. And those ones are 22 cents, which is $22. You know, so it is a difference, obviously, there of $10, uh, more than $10, um, $14. So um, definitely keep a watch on QCOM because the unusual flow there going on. And I actually saw some block trades too for over 1 million shares um, paying at um, $57.85. And this came from the dark pool. So definitely keep a watch on QCOM uh, from people that like large cap stocks or mid cap stocks. Um, but I'm really looking at it from the option angle. And uh, Qualcomm definitely also had a pocket pivot. And so as a result, I am bullish on the stock at this time. And so we are trading it, though, from the options angle. And Jim, maybe you could talk to us about that QCOM chart and what you're seeing. Sure can, Miss Vegas. And I also Great. trade my options on a platform called tastyworks.com. I just started trading options at the first of the year, thanks to the help of Miss Vegas. And and I find it quite enhancing. Stocks that I've never been able to afford or maybe ever play before, I have that opportunity now. And so I figure by the end of the year, I'm going to be one heck of an options trader. So let's bring up QCOM on the yearly chart. And I see we're kind of hit a, a, a resistance top right now here at 58.47. And I'm going to draw me another trend line right here. You can watch how I do these sometimes when I'm drawing out my trend lines. I try to hit the bases of a candlestick. And I'm going to put one right up here. That's, that's a beautiful spot. You see right there. And then I've got that bottom candle formed right here. Then we'll we be working into that gap that I see right on here. So we're more or less, I'd say, at a support level. We did have a low down here during the big sell-off back in January to 49.41. She did break that resistance here at 53.77. And you see the 20 days starting to curl up. And we got to right meet up here to where the 200 SMA is, and that's at $60. So let's pull up to 20 day and see if I missed anything on these trend lines. Don't think I did. I see some little, see a little resistance level right here at 58.25. We did kind of pull back from uh, Thursday's high, which we were at 58.61. We're at 57.98 here after hours. Let's pull up three minutes, see if I missed anything else. I'm always missing some. Every time, every chart tells a different story. So I've got a little resistance level right here at 58.04. I got another one right here, right around 58.10. Not too much of a spread to 58.15. Whammy. Put that right there. Then I got a low support down here right around the 57.84. And another one right here at the 59.90. So this is what I'll be looking at come Monday. See if I can try to get in me on a trade. I'll be looking for a resistance level that I need to break at the 58.25. Well, first at 58.15. And she'll have to bounce up to that 58.25 to be the next resistance. Pullback support could be right down here. And I'm going to test it right here at the 57.75 area. And right now we closed after hours. We did have a little pop up here to the 58.12. And she did pull back to the 57.98. So I'm going to keep this one on watch. Got a low support. Let me pull up that 20-day one more time just to have a 20-day look. And I see one more trend line right here at the 5634 so I don't want to see it go no lower than 5634 right now we're at 5798 it can pull back but let's see if we can get to that double top 
at the 5861 level and break that to the next resistance at $59. And this is QCOM. And we're next one we're going to be talking about is going to be V, I mean C R B P. Okay, well, CRBP, let me tell you about that one. So CRBP, um, I actually uh, took a swing trade on this one, and this is because I did see Corbis Pharmaceutical Holdings. Um, it actually popped on scanners too, but I was looking at it really from a short squeeze perspective as well. Uh, looks like the stock has found a new base, and this is what appealed to me a lot. Um, if you actually take a look here at the stock um well, i did i did analyze it a little more the other day um it also closed above the 50 day <clears throat> it also had a nice gap up and also a pocket pivot which i talk about a lot um and i was reading the conference call transcripts of this company and you know crbp is corbis pharmaceutical holdings well i was reading the transcripts um, they're into biotech, healthcare, and I read the transcripts from the CEO, and uh, his name's Yuval, and um, he did, his name's Yuval Cohen, and uh, he gave a fabulous conference call. I was very impressed with what he had to say recently, and even Barbara White, who's the chief medical officer, and, um, you know, they they did talk about um they're obviously they have a lot of things in the pipeline but they also did talk about how they're focused also on the medical marijuana so i really was impressed with that and um as, aside from all of that um you know looking at the chart itself uh this to me looks like it's uh, ready for a move and i think the shorts will be squeezed on the stock um i actually they also got an upgrade uh, on the stock has been upgraded by the analysts and one upgrade was for $18 and another analyst upgrade to $34. Maybe that's a really longer term target, uh, but you know, keep these things in mind. Uh, but I definitely um, am bullish on the stock and uh, I'm looking for the stock to have a beautiful continuation and I will just be patient on it. Um, and I think again, it's formed a brand new base here and the stock is looking to have a continuation. So if it pulls back, I'll let Jim talk about where the support and resistance are. Um, also, I did look at the block trades on the stock. There was a lot of block trades on Friday uh, with the stock um, around the $7.50 mark. And that seems to be the spot uh, where they're going in. Um, so the other thing too is that the stock is bouncing off that 750 area and if you look at it on the five minute chart you can see that so um, I'm bullish on this and uh, Jim let's hear your thoughts on CRBP because I'm expecting a barbecue on this oh I love a good barbecue yeah so I'm kind of looking at this chart we we, we, did, we had had some ups and downs, some roller coaster rides. When it does sell off, it sells off pretty hard, as you can tell on these three different, th five different, six, you know, every pattern that it does start to sell off, it is a pretty, pretty hard sell off. But we are getting up here to resistance levels. We did have a nice breakout on Friday off the, like she said, that 20, that uh, 50 SMA that's right here at 728. And she did have a resistance high of right around 809. So she did pop up on the scanner a lot Friday. And that's another good sign. I'm kind of looking, you know, I'm trying to determine where the pivot point on this chart is. And it's really hard to tell. I'd say right around this 690 area. So that would probably be the lowest I'd want to see it go. As long as it continued the pattern upward. And let me pull up the 20 day real fast. One hour. Looking at it. She really had a nice run pre-market, and she did really have a nice run to 809 high, pulled back to low support right around 761, and then bounced up right after close with a spinning top to level out here at 788. Low support on this stock to me is going to be, first support is going to be right around 772. The second one's going to be right around 750, right where that 20 SMA is, right here at 750. And then a low support 
I'm trying to determine, I would say down here between these two moving averages of 714 and 720. So if it pulls back, I think it will have a nice retracement bounce to that pivot point of right around 750 to break that double top again here at the 772 and reach that, that yearly, that, that last high of 809. So please keep CRBP on watch. I'm currently not in it right now, but I'll definitely be watching it come Monday morning. And the next one we're going okay. to talk. And I just want to add one comment to about CRBP. Yeah. I, when I was reading the conference call transcripts uh, the other day, um, they do have a hundred million dollars of cash oh. that takes them into the second quarter of 2020. So, um, and this good. does not include any kind of additional, um, I guess what they call, you know, from the, from the, from some of their biotech stuff going on, uh, additional, I guess, payouts that they're eligible to get if they achieve certain milestones, that is nothing that is separate. So, um, I, the fact that they have a lot of cash on hand is super, super strong. Yeah. So that's actually an added bonus in addition to the stock for a longer term hold. Uh, so they're in very good shape. Yep, I agree. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Soli, S-O-L-Y. This yeah, is one we previously so talked about. We did. So for those of you on YouTube that follow and listen and subscribe, if you were listening to this stock or our videos, I we alerted this in the $5 range. And do you see where it's gone to right now? This is just amazing. Just last week. And Solitron is into the medical appliance equipment, and I've talked about how the medical appliances are actually uh, a big field, big industry, uh, one to definitely uh, follow because that's going to be hot, I think, for 2019 and 2020. And they have that, you know, the rapid acoustic pulse, which they call RAP. And the, I told you they take away the tattoos within like three to four sessions versus you know uh nine or ten so um this is really good uh technology and um you know they also um you know i think they're waiting for this fda approval on on uh this appliance so we'll wait and see um they did have news though i do want to mention they had news on uh that they did get the european patent uh for this shockwave so the news was on april the 4th which was thursday um so they did get the european patent uh which is a total of 11 patents but there's also 42 pending ones in various countries um so that is very good news um that they got approval in the uh i guess uh european patent yeah so that's good a lot of tattoos over in that country <laughs> yeah okay so jim let's hear about this chart because this had a huge move okay so at least had a huge move i'm sure there was there were profit takers uh that might have been in the stock in the even in the six and sevens and took profits um so let's hear where you think the stock's gonna go i mean this is a new 52 week high closing yeah but i do see a shooting star on the stock so i'd like to hear your thoughts on yeah. this chart please. and this stock ain't been out that long this is a new ipo we talked about the register of the ipo in our last video session about how they how they registered it out and it was it was quite interesting yeah it's a red a plus yeah so it, it did open up at that register offering right here right around had a low of 434 and then she had a high that day of 493 then she just had a continuous run all the way up especially this last week and a half how it ran up these seven days from this support level here at 672 all the way up to 1184 and yes there was some profit takers that came in kind of what I call a sledgehammer right here where it come down and closed at around 1059 so let's pull it up to the 20 day you get a lot better look on how this beautiful run came into place from 485 all the way up to that 1184 that's a hundred and some percent gain 120 maybe just a rough estimate so if it does pull back any at all i think it will pull back to this previous high we had right here and your first little stop is going to be right under 969 between 944 and 969 is going to be that low support area 
I hate to see it go below that. If it does, it's going to hit this other one down here, and that's right at 873. But what we've got to break when we come in here Monday or next week is going to be this 1105 area. And this really has had an exhausting run up. So, you know, I wouldn't blame it to pull back just a little bit to consolidate after that charming last three day run from this low area of 862 all the way up to 884. That's a $3 bounce. So, um, we do have a descending pattern going on. I think she just had to sell off because it just, like I said, it was too big of a bounce. But this was one of our best, one of our prettiest calls that we've made so far. I, I really liked how Miss Vegas pointed this out and got in here before everybody else did. And it just ran all the way up. And so let's, let's call a couple support areas. We got the low support right here at 940. We have the pivot point area right around $10. If it goes below 10, that might be a place to probably get in it at for your first entry at 990 to 10 bucks and then try to retrace back up here and break this 1105 resistance and if we can break that 1105 resistance I don't see it I see it going back up here to the previous yearly high of 1184 but this is one you want to be, play a little caution with and just wait for it to come to you and don't chase it and that's going to be solely s-o-l-y and then we've got this other one that we've been calling out quite a bit, and it's really a bullish stock, and it's called AMD. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about JD. Oh, I mean JD, excuse me. I'll take that back. That one also. Well, we're, not, we're not going to talk about AMD, but let's just first talk about JD. Yes. Okay, so JD.com. So, you know, I'm still bullish on the stock. I'm really confident that the stock's going to go to 33 and 35 in the coming sessions. Uh, it will take some time, but, uh, you know, the founder of um, JD, his name's Liu Queen Dong, but he goes by the English name Richard. And, um, you know, he's 45 and he is one of China's leading tech entrepreneurs. And he became a billionaire back in 2014, so only five years ago. And um, that's when they raised $1.8 billion through the IPO. Um, which made it one of the most valuable Chinese businesses to list only in the U.S. And, you know, he grew up in poverty. And this is what I love. I love these stories. This is, like, so inspiring. But, like, he grew up in poverty in Beijing, about 700 kilometers south of Beijing. And his um, he was the son of a peasant farmers, and they were so poor that they could only eat meat once or twice a year. And when he finished university, he started an electronic shop called 360 Buy in 1998. And it did really well. And he opened up, you know, a couple other locations. But then in 2003, I don't know if you guys remember the SARS epidemic that came out, which was uh, stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And SARS was big. Like people were walking around wearing masks, right? Um, so what ended up happening is obviously he couldn't go to work. And he decided, okay, you know what? let me actually put my business online. And then he realized at the time how big the potential of an online business for selling products um, was going to be uh, how popular it was. And then he then decided to rename the company and then he called it uh, JD. And then, you know, some of the company backers include Tencent, uh, which is the online gaming and social messaging group. They got about a 20% stake um, also, they have investors. Do you know that Google paid $550 million to JD.com for a 1% stake in the company? And also, Walmart owns just under 11% of the company, which it received in exchange for the U.S. retailer's China e-com arm. So uh, I think uh, JD is poised to also expand beyond e-com. They're looking to have a European research center in the UK uh, this year. And they're going to focus on artificial intelligence and big data. And keep in mind that their partnership with Google means that it can sell their goods through the U.S. tech company's shopping site overseas. And the two companies, so both JD and Google, have announced that they are exploring retail opportunities together in Southeast Asia and in Europe. So you know what? I think there's more to come with this stock. And this is, in my opinion, one to think about and consider for longer term hold. Just make sure you do your own due diligence. We are not licensed advisors. 
I'm just sharing what like my thoughts, my opinions, but please do your own due diligence, speak to a licensed professional or do your own work and then enter at your own risk and do it, you know, trade, you know, how you like. Um, but JD to me is bullish. I like it also from the options perspective. So we'll definitely be looking at JD uh, calls. Uh, we have some calls already. We have like $32 calls. Uh, but I will be looking for ones for 33, 34, 35 for further out in the coming weeks, uh, just because you know what, that's where I anticipate the stock heading. And I like to be ready for when that happens and take advantage of the options opportunities. Because you know what, when you have a small account, you can't be buying a lot of JD stocks, it's too expensive. So we will look at the options for options, <laughs> no pun intended. And uh, we'll look at that strategy. And uh, we'll see what we come up with tomorrow morning. So, Jim, over to you on JD. All right. Well, let me pull up the chart on JD. First, I'll pull up the yearly chart. I always like to do that first. We're definitely in a pivot point area for a yearly chart. Right here, right around 3126, 3130 area. We did have a yearly high of 4523. Put that whammy right in there. And we did have a double bottom low down here, right around the 19, under 20 right around 1950 something did have a year low of 1921 and she's bounced up pretty much since and now we've hit a double top area here at 3121 that's just telling me on the yearly chart I do see the 28 crossing up over the 200 and we're getting ready to have a golden cross with the 50 crossing over the 200 also so that's going to be a positive sign for this thing to swing up to new resistance level that resistance level is going to be right around the 3286 area. 3286, 32, 27, somewhere right around there. 3342. So let's pull up the 20 day, get one more look at it. You can see I've pretty much have it charted up pretty well. I see a low support right down here at the $30 area, 3012. We're at 30. 125 right now it did pull back from the previous high that we had Friday which was at 3157 which was a double top right here you could see it last Monday where it kind of scored up there and it pulled back and that'd been a nice little entry if you were watching this trade because you do have a support level right here right around the 2959 2970 area and that's where we pulled back and she's bounced up three dollars since in the last two days so this thing might pull back to the 20 SMA right here, right around 3081. I do see a support level there. I'm going to go ahead and draw that on there, 3084. With a low support, with a second support right around 3032, and a low support right down here at the 2950 area, if she decides to pull back. If not, we'll break this double top at 3168 and bring it up to the next resistance of 3193. And I'm going to pull up that one year one more time magnify this up a little bit see if I can find yeah, I can't see it on there so let's pull up the 180 day see if that helps me out here yeah it helps out a lot so we got a target up to this new channel we 3193 to 30 30 33 dollars and that should be a real solid resistance on it with your first stop here at 3193 if we can break that double top. And that's going to be JD. Keep it on watch. It's very bullish right now. And I do love the story behind this young man. So let's go ahead and bring up the next chart. And that's, I mean, the next stock. And that's going to be AMD. Yeah. This will so be the last AMD. one. Okay. So AMD, I will say that uh, Lisa Sue. Great work, great job. Um, AMD, she's going to be featured at the um, conference called Computex. And she's going to be a keynote speaker on May 27th. So I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about this. Um, and it's the first ever pre-show keynote speaker that they've ever had. And she's honored to be delivering keynote speaker this year. She's going to be providing uh, details about the next generation of high performance AMD platforms and products. And with the partners, she's gonna tell the story of how leading edge technologies in an open ecosystem are driving an inflection point in computing and industry innovation and positively impacting several important markets. 
And you know what? Still bullish on this stock. I mean, yes, it had its pullback. It's had a bit of a run and it pulled back. But you know what? AMD is a stock to watch for 2019. This stock is bullish. They don't even have earnings till the 23rd of the month. So we still have earnings to go through. Um, but the stock definitely is on a new uptrend. I see some new directional movement of where the stock is going. It is definitely overbought. Um, the other thing, too, is um, thank you, Mr. Wall Street. This was an article that was shared. And um, the article actually did mention on Investors Business Daily that AMD leads the five hot chip stocks to buy in the buy range at the moment. And that the chip sector is coming to life after many names sold off hard in the latter part of 2018. And one of the top five stocks mentioned by Investors Business Daily was AMD. So definitely, Jim, let's hear um, you know what they're saying. We know that some of the bases are very deep and therefore risky, but I'd like to hear about your thoughts on this AMD chart. Yeah, this is one we called under 10 bucks for a bounce up to 30 and we did hit that target from that ten dollar area and actually run up higher than that to 34.14 on a yearly high we did have a pretty good little pullback we were playing this on the pullback back last year before the end of the year then we had a double bottom or a triple bottom right down here at the 1659 area and she's done nothing but run up have some real nice breakouts then when it has a real nice breakout it pulls back and then bounces right off one of the moving averages on them pullbacks. And then it tries to reach that double top again, and it pulled back. We had a low support right down here, right around 21.41 that we called out in the room. And then here in the last oh, month and a half, she's ran up all the way up here to a new resistance high. And Vegas was only $0.05 cents off of her $30 call on this trade here last week. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day right now, and I'm going to show you a couple things we i sit here and watch this stock every day because i just know if it pulls back it's going to bounce back up we do have a low 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 sell-off support at 28 dollars if that does tingle down there that's going to be a very strong buy from right now that's only not that, that could happen i mean it's only an 80 95 cent dip and that is possible we did have that be about a pivot point on that last breakout we had down here from 2632 all the way to 29.95. I did call a support level here last week on this trade. I'm going to pull up the five day and show it to you. Five day, 15 minute. We had a double bottom support level right here, right around this channel, which was 28.71 to 28.80. So it did bounce off that a couple of times. It did do it Thursday consistently, ran up to 29.39, consolidated, and pulled right back into that channel. Then Right after that, she went ahead and bounced up to a new high up here. Not a new high, but a high pre-market, which was right around this 29.70. Let me magnify this up. I want to get this right. 29.71 area. And I go off the base of the candle. I don't go off the wicks. The wick is extra credit. We did pull back from that area to that support channel. That's at 28.80, which was the top of that channel that I made back in here with that double bottom. And she bounced off that a couple of times, and she just kind of glazed up and made it up to that 29.10. So I think what we've seen in the past three days after that huge run is a real beautiful, uh, healthy, um, consolidated area for three days in a row. And let me pull this up for five days one more time and show you exactly what I mean. That's a one day, five day. So we had that big run, and it just kind of held back into this channel right in here so that's a good consolidated period it had to relax so we're going to see what monday brings to this trade um, we're always bullish on this stock for sure we need to break the resistance level of 30 bucks be 29.95 pullback support is going to be your first one here in that channel that i mentioned earlier 28.71 to 28.80 then i have another low support second support right around the 28.35 with a low right down here at 28 and I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a red line because that's going to be where I'm going to start buying me some options again if this thing does hit that target that'll be a hard sell off to me and well he respected for it to bounce back up and that's going to be AMD please keep it on watch we've called it 
perfect in the room almost every every time. And with Miss Vegas's help on the option, it does help the smaller counts to get into to a nice little scout play or even a swing. And that's it for the aftermarket report. I bet Miss Vegas has something to say here, so we're going to hand it right back over to her. Yeah, well, I just want to say thanks for listening, subscribing, following. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter now because I will look to share some real-time ideas on Twitter. So if you are a subscriber and you have a Twitter account, follow because I can sometimes share some ideas if the timing is is proper. I can look to share real-time ideas to help you all, um, whether you're in our room or not. Uh, is irrelevant. We still want to help the trading community. We did a really good job with alerting M for Macy's. We had that at 17 cents on an option strike because we saw a short squeeze coming. And you know what? It went all the way to 70 cents the next day. So even if it was traded the same day, it went as high as 63 or 64, I think. And uh, people just so happy that they just tripled, quadrupled their smaller accounts. And that's what it's all about, is helping you grow and compound your gains. So on that note, I wish you all a great weekend and uh, look forward to um, connecting with you all on Twitter. So please follow. All right. We also have other links that you can hook up with to us on on the right side of the page of our website. Please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And we do offer a two-week subscription free just so you can get used to the room and listen to Miss Vegas and I on voice eight hours a day, more or less. And that's going to be it with the aftermarket report. Today's date, April the 7th, 2019. Sunday's edition is always longer than the other ones we put out, but we just want to prepare everybody for the upcoming week. And we love stocks.